Okay, we're all good. Let's do it. Hello and welcome to the B2C Lead Generation Podcast. You're listening to the B2C Lead Gen Podcast. My name is Daniel Hopewell here with Simon Delaney, and this is episode 102, The Three Biggest Problems Lead Buyers Face. Simon, we talk to lead buyers all the time, um, and today we've set out three of the biggest problems we see them come across all, all the time, and um, I'm going to put them to you, and we're going to hopefully talk through some solutions for people listening. Um, let's begin with a pretty... A pretty obvious one, but a common problem that needs addressing. Poor lead quality. How do lead buyers who are suffering from this problem uh, go about trying to change that? Okay, so <clears throat> poor lead quality, there's four things that everyone sort of focuses on, and they are very important, but they only take you so far. So one is verification, so verifying that you're speaking to a human being, basically, that the email address is legitimate, the telephone number is contactable, the address exists, the name looks real, you can associate the name to the person, et cetera. You know, there's no salacious words. That's very important. Another one is qualifying, you know, can they actually be a customer? Um, are they in the right demographic region or geographic region? Are they of the right demographics? All these other things. Um, another is finding good quality lead suppliers. Um, so a lot of companies that buy leads major on the quality of the lead suppliers. Very, very important. Another one is speed to lead. So whilst all that is 100% needed and is very important, there's two other things that most lead buyers don't really major on but will 100% improve the quality of the leads that you buy. And that is tracking at a granular level. So exactly where the data comes from, the ad that's collecting it, the landing page, the source, the subsource, everything else. And the reason why tracking at a granular level is so important to improve lead quality is that you can actually see the very minute micro moments that are generating sales. So we're not just talking about lead quality for the sake of lead quality. We're talking about lead quality so that we can actually get some tangible results from it. And the only way you can do that is to track at a really granular level where the sales are coming from, where the best leads are coming from, what, where the best quality leads are coming from that lead to sales. So if you can track all of that at a micro level, and bear in mind, when we're saying tracking, we're talking about automating the process, but you have to put the processes and systems in place to, to be able to do that. That will 100% improve your lead quality because you will start to cut the stuff that doesn't work and start to put more budget behind the things that do work. And that feeds directly into the other point, which is feeding back results to wherever the leads are coming from, whether it's an internal marketing team or third-party lead generators. And the reason is you're actually doing exactly the same thing. Because when you feed those results back, if you've got a genuine partnership built with the lead generator or the marketing team, which you'd obviously hope to have because there's no point otherwise, they're using that information in exactly the same way. Where are the best leads coming from? Where can we put more of our budget to ensure that we get more successful outcomes? And if they're not doing that, it means all they're trying to do is send you data, not leads that lead to sales. Mm. So doing those two things, in addition to verifying, qualifying, finding good, finding good quality lead suppliers and ensuring that you're either doing um, speed to lead or appointment booking or whatever, all of those things will massively improve the quality of the leads that you buy. Quite interesting, actually. It's not just about improving lead quality as a whole. It's looking at the, the leads you have and identifying where the good ones and where the bad ones, separating that out and actually removing the, the bad. Um, it's an interesting way of looking at it. Well, the, the key thing with this is that what you try and do is create sales, right? So... Mm -hmm. You know, even though we're talking about the quality of leads, ultimately what we all want, um, if we're trying not to rip people off, is more sales. And we want to be able to connect with the consumers that are leads. And so verifying is fine. You know, you're just making sure it's a real person. 
qualifying is the is fine because you're just making sure that you could actually sell to them um finding good suppliers is great because you know that's about building trusted relationship and ensuring speed to lead and the uh, speed that data transfers from one entity to another is all very important but none of that actually improves the level of sales you're getting outside of removing stuff that you can't sell to but by focusing on the granular moments that actually lead to sales means that you're not just focusing on getting data and you know optimizing it in the best way you're focusing on actually getting sales that's why i'm saying those two other points are actually the things that you implement to get more sales the other mm -hmm. stuff is all about removing bad stuff this is about optimizing the good stuff yeah cool well it's interesting um different, different approach to it uh the second problem i i've sort of toyed with how best to present this to you because it's slightly vague, so bear with me. Um, I'm terming it the chaotic nature of data, and I will just go into a little story before I put that to you. So I was talking to someone the other day who is a CMO at a, a brand, um, never done lead buying before. Um, so he was looking, talking to me about using that strategy as you know a new channel to sort of explore. And I was sort of trying to work out his hesitations around it, why he didn't, why he was cautious and it was almost this fear that the buying of leads is one thing, but it's the management of the leads and sort of making sense of it and the intangible quality of the data that I think we're giving him reservations. So for people listening who are maybe in a similar boat, what would you, would you say to them to sort of take control of it and kind of reduce that fear? Um, it's the management of data, exactly like you said, it's, like an intangible product it's not like buying a chair or something you know mm. there's nothing to touch and feel it's all this is why transparency and trust is so important um and if you're new to buying leads or you're unsure if you're buying leads in the best way there's like a series of steps and processes that you need to go through and it, it's just like a checklist effectively you just need to make sure that they're all in order and let's get this right that Controlling data is a bit like trying to control wild animals, right? Like it can easily get out of control. You can easily lose stuff. You can easily be ripped off. Bad things will happen if you don't get control of it. And this isn't control, you know, from like a marketing perspective we're talking about. This is actually like controlling data so that you can actually utilize it effectively so that you can drive sales and great marketing from it. So there's a series of steps that you need to go through. So if we take it from the top, if you're new to buying leads or you want to potentially improve the processes that the buying of leads go through, this is what I would suggest. So number one, you need to know exactly where the data comes from. So a bit like what we were talking about, what you need to track. So you obviously have a source that data comes from. So that will be the first entity that you're dealing with. And then from them, you want all the other information, you know, and that will be contained as values within the lead. So probably which ad created it, which landing page, which subsource of its affiliates, um, sub sub source keywords, anything else that you can um, gain, which ad, uh, which landing page might have already said that, which native advertorial, everything that you get. That's the number one thing. The second thing is verifying all that data that you receive from them so you want to ensure that you're getting all the fields that you actually need as required fields because i know plenty of people that buy i was on a call the other day um with someone who was spending uh, like a ridiculous sum of money i don't know 40 grand a week on leads and half the leads didn't contain the right fields that they needed because they weren't required because basically what you want to do is set something up that rejects the leads if it doesn't contain the information that you require. So that could be something like, I don't know, someone's salary or um, what their household income could be or whatever it is. Then you want to verify all the information that you get. Um, you want to deduplicate the information that you get. So against current prospects, you want to qualify the data. So this is, can this person actually be our customer? Are they in the right geographic area? We mentioned this before in qualifying. Um, does all the information mean that we could actually sell to this person? You want to suppress against current customers. You want to be able to control the volume of 
leads that you're getting from any particular source. This is about adding caps onto them. Um, and you then want to be able to deliver all that data, whether it needs reformatting, however the entity that you're sending it to, whether that's a CRM or a dialer, in exactly the format that it needs to be. So if you go through all those checklists, this is how you control data. Where the data comes from, does it require all the fields we need? Is the person a real person? Have we verified it? Can we actually sell to them? Have we qualified it? Have we de-duped against our current prospects? Have we suppressed against our current customers? Can we control the volume that we're receiving from that source? And can we deliver it to another entity and make sure that it has delivered? And then we can feed back those results to wherever the leads came from. That is ultimately how you control data so that you as a lead buyer have control over it all. Just to set myself a little reminder to send that, I'm going to cut that and send in that timing so it will answer, answer his question. But I think, like you say, if you're new to it and it does seem a little bit daunting, anything, if you can have like a step-by-step guide to kind of work through, I think it makes the whole thing seem a little less daunting. So yeah, I think um, I think that's useful for people who are maybe wanting to get into buying leads. Uh, and I think... You know, like we said at the top, this, and I might have given a quite long winded answer, and I kind of answered it twice, I think, but, it, you know, I was trying to do like a long, longer answer and then break it down to little chunks. But the reality is, really, what you're trying to do is get control, like, yeah, as a lead buyer, because it's an intangible product. You need to get control of it. You need to understand how it's collected, where it's going, um, and exactly whether it's what you want and need as a piece of data, which is odd because it's ultimately a consumer. Um, and I, I, yeah, I, I know plenty of companies and lead buyers, especially that struggle to get that piece sorted, but it's, you know, go through that sort of process and uh, it'll make everything a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, sure. Well, hopefully there we've set out a, a framework to make a little sense of the chaos that uh, I introduced this problem as. Um, which brings us to our third problem. It's something you've actually touched upon earlier, but um, I'm not letting you off that easy because we didn't actually go into detail. But identifying good suppliers, um, you mentioned it before, but let's let's set out a way that people who are buying leads can actually identify some good suppliers because I think it's a big problem we need to sort of give a solution for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are more lead suppliers now than I think there probably ever has been. Um. There's that no makes barrier. it harder, harder to actually work out the good ones. Yeah, right? I, I was thinking about this the other day. Right? Like, there, there are definitely more lead suppliers than ever. Um, there's no barrier to entry. It's not like you have to pass any sort of course to become a lead generator or to be a broker or an agency. Um, The temptations of making easy money are always there. Yeah, APIing list data, falsifying records, doing whatever. And so mm. it's really, really important that you can build trusted relationships where the lead generator or the third party you're buying leads from effectively almost becomes like an internal marketing partner. Um that that's ultimately the relationship you're looking to build. So identifying those companies is tough because they're everywhere. I get, you know, I don't even buy leads, uh, but because I'm in this sphere and I used to buy a lot of leads, um, I get approached, I don't know, two, three times a day, I would say, either via email or on LinkedIn. Um, from different companies or individuals looking to sell leads. Uh, and so what what you ultimately need to do is go through a due diligence checklist with them. So, f- well, first things first, take a look at what they are. If they've got a website, if they haven't got a website, it becomes like, you know, okay, this is straight off the sort of lorry type thing. If someone just approaching me, um, you know, if we're going to be serious about working with lead generators, 
you know, is have they got some sort of presence online somewhere? Um, have they done this before? Can we go through due diligence with them? How do they generate leads currently? Who do they work with? Can we speak to their current clients? How long have they been trading for? Were they working on another entity before that? Do they have any testimonials, reviews, referrals, anything else? Can I see a list of the brands that they've been working with? Can I prove that they've been working with those brands? Um, do they have problems like, you know, going through any sort of technical setups? Does anything sort of seem new to them? How are they generating leads? Is there anything that stands out that could be a problem? And the pro the biggest problem is, is that most lead buyers are quite desperate to buy leads, probably cheaply. Um, and just work with anyone, even if it sounds like a good deal. And so this is why, you, you know, this getting stung thing is like two sides of a coin. There's one, there's someone doing the stinging. And the other one is that, you know, you're letting yourself be stung by just taking shortcuts, doing all the stuff that we're talking about. <laughs> so it's tough. I get it, right? It's, it is difficult. Um, and this is why every single company that you ever speak to that buys leads of any sort of volume and even smaller volumes has been ripped off. Um, almost certainly, I, I, you know, I, I know a lot of companies that buy leads. I've bought a lot of leads in the past, and I don't know anybody that hasn't been ripped off several, several times. Um, but you have to, you have to do that due diligence. You know, if something seems off, don't go for it. And you know, without plugging this too much, this is ultimately why we created Partner Hype. You know, because it's doing all these things, it's opening up this level of transparency. And it comes back to the point of the CMO that you spoke to, this intangible product. You know, we're not dealing with something you can touch and feel and, you know, whatever. This is just something in the ether that we're believe and we and when you're buying from third party providers, you can't, you know, you're a step removed now. So now there's an ad in the ether somewhere that's generating people's data that is then being sent to you. And you need to be able to do all the things we've been talking about, like verifying the data and qualifying it, but then you've got to be able to trust this entity that's generating it for you. Um, so again, it's like a series of steps and processes that you have to go through. It's really funny because you don't ever want to remove the creativity from marketing, right? But when you're dealing with data, it's almost like the beauty of it. You can create systems and processes and steps to go through and you can apply this to where you're buying leads from as well. Um, yeah. Because it's all data, what you're actually doing is fact-finding and verifying information and qualifying. It's the same series of steps. So, uh, so I, just, I was going to say, I was going to reiterate one thing you said there, because I think it's important. It's, and it may seem basic, but this idea that just ask people like if they're willing to be transparent, because the good lead generators will be transparent and if they see in any way reluctant or hesitant to be transparent, you've got to think, well, why not? What they're hiding, right? Like it's a very simple way of getting a quick answer to this kind of thing. Yeah. And the other thing is that, you know, there's like new lead generators appearing constantly and, you know, like it's very difficult for them, I'm sure. But some of them, and I've seen this, so there's like Facebook groups where, you know, trying to train people to be lead generators and, um, some of them they don't have no idea what they're doing right they're just listening to some guy like telling them what to do because they have no idea what they're doing but then they'll sell to other companies and these companies are working with them under the understanding they know what they're doing and they're the expert in the market and things so they're not like defrauding or ripping people off uh in any way that they you know they're not like deliberately trying to do it but they might not be creating the best outcome for you because they don't really understand what they're doing. They're just looking for a way. There's always a thing of like, you know, creating a side hustle now. I'm sure a lot of people come into lead generation to create a side hustle um, because of the no or low barrier to entry. Um, and if you're going to be taking lead buying seriously, which is, you know, why on earth would you not? It needs to be taken as seriously as the 
companies that are generating leads, they take it incredibly seriously. You know, there's huge amount of thought and effort and everything else going into it, including like the thought of ripping you off. <laughs> um, but lead buying needs to have the same level of like dedication to it to make sure that the leads that you're buying turn to sales. I mean, the, you know, mm. you've got to do these things. So carrying out this due diligence, putting these processes, systems, and steps in place around the companies that you're going to be working with, finding out absolutely everything about them, and then applying all of that information we spoke about a few minutes ago with the data. Um, you know, that's how you find good lead suppliers, and that's how you prove they're good lead suppliers by actually fact checking the, all the data they're sending you effectively all the time yeah um so well we've sort of flipped it there at the end we've done the three biggest problems they face then we've done a a bonus problem which is having a good hard look at yourselves and making sure that yeah. you do doing <laughs> things right um, yeah cool well yeah it was a relatively short one today um but we wanted to go through yeah just um you know we we talk to buyers all the time and we just kind of thought, let's just pick out three of the, the big problems that crop up time and time again. Hopefully there we've set out a solution or at least a framework of things that they can go through to solve these problems. Um, but yeah, cheers for that. That was episode 102, the biggest three problems that lead buyers face. Thanks for listening to the B2C Lead Generation Podcast. Be sure to hit subscribe to hear more from those at the very cutting edge of the lead gen world.